everyone, it's Jenna Finkston, Goddess of Light, and thank you for joining me for another majestic journey into storytelling time. And I would love to invite you into the Goddess Durga. And the Goddess Durga is known for inner strength as well as she is the protector. She is the warrior goddess, the fearless heart, but she also has the name of Maha Devi. Maha just means the mother goddess. So she holds the energy of that fearless goddess warrior within who is ready to step onto the battlefield. But she also has the essence and the Sanskrit word for essence is bhavana, as the mother, bringing us into the energy of compassion, of love, and tenderness. And a matter of fact, a lot of her energy that comes from stepping onto the battlefield as a warrior goddess is done with grace, is done with compassion, and with love. She always is known for wearing a beautiful red sari that flows down over her skin. She has long, beautiful hair, and she has bangles that go all the way up her beautiful arms. She has beautiful, rounded, voluptuous breasts and a curved belly. And the gods, Vishnu, Shiva, the god of heaven, Indra, as well as the mountain god, Himalaya, has given her parts of her body. So connecting us back into the balance of feminine and masculine energy. Her face was gifted from Lord Shiva, and her arms, eight arms, were gifted from Lord Vishnu, the sustainer. Her lion, which is her vehicle, and within the stories of the gods and the goddesses, all of them have a vehicle. And the vehicle represents their light moving within the cosmos, moving within the universe, and moving within the world. And when Durga is ready to step onto the battlefield, you can hear her roar, just like her lion. And through her roar, the oceans shake, the skies shake, and the earth trembles. So the story within Durga, and there are many, is the invitation to look at the sweetness and the bitterness of life, the light and the dark, and how at times we have to move into the darkness in order to be gifted the light, to be gifted our truth. In yoga or in Sanskrit we say satya, to step more fully into our light so that we can gift the world, the universe, our gifts. So at any time, even within the darkness, we can call on Durga. But one thing to remember about Durga's energy and her magical powers is that we can call on Durga even within our highest of times, within our human experience. So when we're ready to really activate a dream, a vision, a relationship, a leap of faith, we can call on Durga. When we're in our darkest of moments, we can call on Durga to help us within the internal battlefield because Durga actually invites us into that spiritual awakening and we all have our internal battlefields moving us into a higher place, awakening our truth and again awakening our light. So one way to call on Durga is through mantras or through chanting, through sound. In one arm, Durga holds a conch shell, and this represents sound. In another arm, she holds the beauty of a lotus flower, taking us into fertility. She also has a sword, and she has knives, and she has a bow and arrow that was given to her from Indra, the god of the heavens. Within the heavens, we have a lot of the gods and goddesses that embrace the abundance, the sweetness, the ecstasy of life. And these are all known as devas. And devas are an invitation into the pleasure, the joy, the peace. And as they gift the world and the universe, all of these gifts,
gifts. It's an invitation to create more joy and more peace. But then on the other side, which perhaps you could call the darker side, the demons, we have the Azuras. The Azuras are the demons within this story, and they are represented as the darker side of the world. They connect into our ego. And all of us within this human experience have both the Deva, the lightness, and the Azuras, the darkness. So as we step into calling on Durga, we step into a mantra, Om Dum Durga Aye Namaha. So we're going to drop into this together. And if you would like to join me, I would love it. And we're going to really call on her energy, her essence, her protection, her inner strength, and her fearless heart. So one of the mudras for Durga is to turn your thumb in and then wrapping the pointer finger around it and the other fingers drop into the palms of your hands so the thumb is sticking up a little bit and you can go ahead and bring the back of your hands to your upper thighs or to your knees whichever feels most comfortable and then let's go ahead and just gently draw your eyes gently close and let's just start to connect to the beauty of our breathing body our beloved connecting us into the dance between the inhalation the pause the embrace of our soul and the exhalation Om Doom Durga Aye Namaha. Om Doom Durga Aye Namaha. If you would like to join, I'm going to drop into chanting and we'll just do a few rounds. I'm calling in Maha Devi Durga. Take in a deep inhalation and exhale fully. Om Doom Durga Aye Namaha 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 So now that we've called on Durga, the goddess Durga, I would love to welcome you into this journey, into this story. So one day, 
connecting us into the Azura Kings. And remember, the Azuras are the demons. They are the d darker side. This is connecting us into our ego. And we have the Kings, Shumba and the Shumba. And they have decided that they want to take over the world. They want to take over the universe. And so they start their practices, very intense practices, whether it be mantras or their yoga practice, connecting into their weapons. And they have decided that they also want to take their powers into impelling Lord Brahma. They are going to invite Lord Brahma into the invitation that no man or no god can defeat them on the battlefield to take over the world. And so as they use their magical powers on Lord Brahma, he says yes. In the background, Shiva and Indra, the god, the lord of the heavens, and then the mountain god, Himalaya, they're bowing their heads in frustration and anger and knowing that the world is going to fall apart with the Azuras moving into taking over the whole universe, the lower worlds as well as the higher worlds. And so, as Lord Brahma promises them that no man and no God can defeat them on the battlefield, there is one loophole. There is never spoken that a goddess, a woman, can defeat them. So keep that in your back pocket for this journey as we start to move a little bit deeper. So as Shiva and Indra and the Himalaya, Lord Himalaya of the mountains, they come into a meeting, they decide that it's time to call on Mahadevi Durga. So whenever the world is truly falling apart, this is when we start to call on Durga or even Kali, which is another form of Durga and another form of Shakti, divine feminine energy rising up. But they also know that Durga hides out and so they have to drop into their intuition, into their third eye. Ajna, connecting them into their inner wisdom and into their knowledge. So they head out within this long journey and they climb mountains, they move through the forest, over lakes, over the rivers, and they finally stop in this one area and they close their eyes and they feel the air start to change. There's this beauty in the air, even this beautiful scent of ecstasy. And as they slowly open their eyes, there is Durga sitting on her lion in her majestic and beautiful ways with her long dark hair and her red sari moving into the grass and her bangles that move up all of her eight arms connecting us into all of her majestic weapons. And she looks at them with a beautiful, serene smile. And you see with Durga, her eyes are full of love. So to even look at Durga, man or woman, you instantly fall passionately in love with her. And you see the essence of compassion and of tenderness, of that grace and that fearless heart that she exudes. So Shiva, Lord Shiva, gets down on his knees with his beautiful stoic chest and his wild, wild dreadlocks. He brings his hands into prayer hands and he bows to Durga and says, Oh Maha Devi Durga, we need you. We need you for this, the, for this battle. And Durga says, why do you guys always wait to the last minute when the world is falling apart? Can't you come to me just a little bit earlier so things are not so wild, not so crazy, not so loco? And they agree. Yet they also know that Durga would never turn her back to saving the world and bringing balance into the world, the universe. So the journey begins for Lord Shiva, Lord Vishnu, and also the mountain god Himalaya and Indra, the god of the heavens. They start to move back through the mountains, through the rivers, over the lakes, into the universe, over the sky. And she steps onto the battlefield with the Azuras and she's all alone. 
and you can feel her presence once again with the shimmering air. You can smell her erratic perfume. And as she sits on her lion with her heart lifted, her features of her face are just full of grace and of compassion. And do remember that when you do look in Durga's eyes, you, you fall in love all humans, all gods, all goddesses, and all creatures. And also remembering that the loophole is that they did not say that a goddess or a woman could not defeat the kings, the Azuras. And so as Durga steps onto the battlefield, she gently starts to just sway her eight arms up in the air. And you see from her fingertips that flowers and blossoms start to fall into the earth, creating abundance and beauty. And as we start to connect into this energy, you also see Shumba and the Shumba peering out of their windows, looking at this divine, beautiful, erratic goddess. And then you see their whole army at the house just gazing in the distance on the battlefield. So Shumba and Nushumba have decided within their home that they want Durga to be their wife. They want Durga to be their goddess, and they're madly in love with her. Yet they have no idea that she is there to connect into balance with the world and to defeat them as taking over the world. So Shumba and Nishumba send one of their guardians out onto the battlefield. The guardian comes over to Durga on her lion and he says, Maha Devi Durga, what are you doing here? Shumba and Nishumba want you to come in for a beautiful dinner, divine, yummy food, and connect into pleasure. She says, that is so beautiful and I would love to meet them, but I'm here to defeat them on the battlefield and save the universe, save the cosmos. And the guardian looks at her and says, what, are you crazy? You can never defeat these kings. You can never defeat Shumba Nishumba. And she looks at him with a very gentle smile and says, well, we will see. And so the guardian goes back to Shumba Nishumba and tells them of what Durga has told him. And so then they send out their army. And as the army comes marching out, Durga picks up her sword and she throws it into the sky in circles in a very graceful way. And she points her sword at the army and all of a sudden the army dissolves into the beautiful grass, into the petals and the flowers, connecting us into fertility, into the earth and into the soil. Shumba and Shumba, their eyes get bigger and bigger as they watch their full army just dissolve and there is nothing left. So the guardian comes back out to Durga and says one last time, Shumba and Nishumba will not fight you. They're giving you one last chance to say yes to becoming their wife and moving into divine pleasure and divine ecstasy, love making, astrology and connecting into their world. But of course, Durga says, nope, not gonna happen. Send out your best warrior, I will defeat him. So then, Shumba and Nishumba send out their best warrior. And as he comes riding out onto the battlefield, you all of a sudden see this light come in between Durga's eyes into her third eye, Ajna, and Kali, the goddess Kali, appears. Kali has this wild black hair, and her skin is a black, light black and blue, and her tongue is red, and she's just like, and so when Durga feels as if she needs a little bit of help, she calls on her dear friend Kali, skulls wrapped around her neck and skulls wrapped around her skirt. And the thing with Kali is that she is always licking the blood of demons and warriors that she has brought to their knees. So as this great warrior is coming towards Kali, the thing with this warrior is that 
if he has blood that drops from his skin, from his flesh, from his physical body, and it drops to the earth, all of a sudden, more of his army starts to manifest and take shape. So Kali charges after him, and as she takes her sword and draws blood with this great warrior, she laps up the blood off of his skin so that no other warriors can start to manifest from the earth. As Durga is in the background and Kali is standing fearlessly on the battlefield in front of her, Durga starts to wave her arms again and through her arms all of the other goddesses are manifested and born. We have Lakshmi and we have Saraswati and all of the other goddesses as they start to come on to the battlefield to help defeat these great warriors of the Azura, Shumba, Nushna Shumba. Finally, the guardian comes back out and he says, fine, Shumba and Nushumba will be coming out to fight you. But I beg you one more time, Durga, you cannot win at this battle. And yet she sits on her lion with a gentle smile. And she knows deep down inside that her fearless heart and her tenderness and her compassion will save the universe, save the cosmos, and save the world. So as Shumba and Nushumba come out, they start to argue with Durga that it's not fair that she has brought all of her other goddesses out onto the battlefield. And yet she says to them, we are one. I am Shakti, I am Lakshmi, I am Kali, and I am Saraswati. And so the goddesses start to move back into Durga as she becomes one fearless warrior and the protector. And through her eyes, she looks at Nashumba, and he falls to the earth and dissolves. And so the last Azura king left is Shumba. As Shumba falls to the ground, Durga is looking over him with her exotic, beautiful ecstasy eyes. And he starts to fall in love with this beautiful goddess that exudes the fearless heart, that exudes compassion, tenderness, and that motherly energy. And he feels his body become full of light. His ego starts to leave his body, and his body itself becomes this sparkling gold dust that merges into the earth with the flowers, the green grass, and the soil of the earth. So this beautiful story within Durga, connecting us into the battlefield, is a remembrance that we all have our battlefields. We all are warriors and warrior goddesses. And at times we can have a little bit more of that energy of Azura within us. And at times we can have a little bit more of the Deva. But the connection is bringing in the balance of feminine energy and masculine energy and letting the ego dissolve where it needs to dissolve. So as we connect into the energy, the essence of Durga, calling out to her, bringing her in, Om Doom Durga Aye Namaha, we can call on her in the greatest of moments, those times of the highest of visions, when we're ready for her help. And we can also call on her in the darkest of times. And to remember that even within the darkest of times, just as the lotus extends its roots into the darkness, darkness into the murky waters. The nutrients rise up into the light and we expand more fully into our light. And the word for light is Tejase. Om Doom Durgaye Namaha.